Hola, you know, I, I love being out here back in Lane County. I, uh, I was out, how many folks knew that I was out in Branson, Missouri for five years? Anybody? Branson, Missouri, out in the Ozarks, you know, it's a little different out there. Um, but I, uh, I missed uh, being back in this beautiful weather in the Pacific Northwest. I really did because it was a lot harder, <laughs> the weather out in Missouri. I found this big arch out there in St. Louis. Anybody ever seen that? I thought it was a big McDonald's at first. They forgot to paint it. I'm from Hawaii originally. But I found out, you know what this started over there? It's called the Oregon Trail. Because years ago, hundreds of years ago, 100 years ago or so, all these folks left Missouri and they came to Oregon. Those were called the first Oregonians. How many folks knew that? Yeah, I, yeah that's right. I followed the Oregon Trail back to Oregon. Yeah! <laughs> all right. But I got started out here a few years back when uh, I won a contest for Oldies 99 radio station about 10 years ago or so. And it was just wonderful. Things started happening for us. And the, the, the grand prize for that contest was the Goodwill tour of all of the assisted living facilities in the area. It was a real big confidence builder for me because everywhere I went, the place was packed and no one ever got up and left. I'm telling you, I never held crowds like that in my whole life. It was, you know, some of the best crowds we ever had. And you guys are fantastic too. But uh, I still go to assisted living facilities. If any of you folks works for them and stuff, I've got a number of them. I still go and visit. Yes, I do. It, it makes the people so happy. I was at one not too long ago and I walked in through the Alzheimer unit and some guy jumped out of his bed and he goes, help us! And his wife came to me about five minutes later and said, I hate you. And I said, well, why? And she said, well, he hadn't spoken to me in three months. And he hadn't talked to anybody over a week over here. You come walking through there and he goes, Elvis, you know? <laughs> so I guess they're stirring up some of the memory for the folks out there. But um, I started playing uh, all those places. Then I went to the casinos, the country clubs, and places like here, the Eagles, where there's good food. How many folks enjoyed the food? <laughs> got some good food out here. I, eat it, I ate so much of this food, I, I, I expanded, I couldn't fit in my jumpsuits anymore. $10,000 on rhinestone jumpsuits. My wife said, you know, it's cheaper to lose weight than buy new jumpsuits. How many know she's pretty smart, my wife? She's very smart. She went on the internet, found out there's a diet for Elvis impersonators. It's called the hunka hunka burning fat diet. So I got it and I started doing the all sugar up shakes and everything, mixing up with the blender. I went and got a blender from Walmart. Two days after Christmas, getting ready for a New Year's Eve show, my blender blew up on me. Anybody ever try to return something to Walmart two days after Christmas? I was standing in line out there with this blender under my arm. Everybody, somebody walked up and said, what's the matter, Elvis? You got to return your blender? And that's when me and Elvis, after about an hour and a half waiting in that line out there, we wrote this song together. Because you all know what I had to do, right? I had to return my blender. Hit it, boys. Return my blender. Return my blender. I got a blender from Walmart. The dang thing blew up. Right and early next morning, I tossed it in the back of my truck. She rode up on it. Return my blender. The dang thing blew up. I pressed that button. Well, it started smoking, and it burned all up. Now I went down to Walmart to return this thing, and the line was so long, I said, Elvis, you gotta try something else, baby. So then I dropped it in the mailbox. I sent her special need. Bright and early next morning, that dang blender came right on back to me. She rode up on it. Return my blender. The dang thing blew up. I pressed that button and it got stuck. Well, it's time I'm gonna take it myself. Put it right in that Walmart manager's hand. And if it comes back the very next day, woo, I'm gonna be real mad. The writing on it. Return my blender. The dang thing blew up 
I press that button And it got stuck Oh, return my brother Return my brother Return my brother say it's fans like you that won't let me die. <laughs> You're fantastic. Elvis has some of the loyalest fans ever in the world. I was out in Las Vegas and I did a uh, big Elvis show out there uh, um, with, uh, you know, as kind of a contest. And two of the Elvis guys at the contest, there's about 40 of us, and two of them got in a big fight right in front of the hotel, right where all the cars pull in, you know. And the police, call, somebody called the police, you know. And the police come in there, and they said, what do these guys look like, you know, that was fighting? They said, well, they, <laughs> they, had, black, they had black hair. <laughs> they had black hair, and they had long sideburns. And they went in there, and there's like 50 guys that all looked like that. And they said, we never did find out which guys it was. Interesting things that happen when you're an Elvis impersonator. I was out at the Seven Feathers Casino doing a show with uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders one time. And it was great. We had a great time. Big crowd. Everything was great. And I come walking out, and there was this guy come stumbling out of the bar. And he, sa he said, you're the best Elvis and Presilinator I've ever seen in my life. And that's when I knew I was an Elvis and Presilinator. So I think I, I'm in Presilinating. But I like to do one of my favorite Elvis songs from the 50s. And it goes a little something like this. Hit it, boys. Now, I got started here a few years back. Um, I uh, went out to a contest with uh, Oldies 99, and you know they told me, well, you sound like Elvis, but you got to work on the, the look a little bit. And so uh, I ran into this guy from Tennessee one day, and he said, you know, if you want to do the Elvis, uh, I grew up with Elvis, and uh, you got to get that hair up there real high and black and get them sideburns down long and low, you know? So I put my hair up high and black, got my sideburn down long and low. Strange things started happening right away. I was down at the supermarket, this lady walks up and she goes, Elvis, oh my God, it's Elvis. She wanted to get an autograph, you know. And I said, well, I'm just kind of getting ready for a contest, but you know, I gave her an autograph. Then I went down to the bank and this lady was over there and she goes, Elvis, I've always wanted you to sign right over here. I said, I can't sign that, somebody from the church might see me. So I, I man, I thought I'd get in trouble with this. Well, I got invited to a Chamber of Commerce meeting down at Eugene Hilton. And I didn't know they had a big dot-com convention there. And they invited the biggest dot-com guy of all from Seattle, Bill Bates, or no, Bill Gates. And yeah, and he was down there and they had this big, all the speakers, thousands of people, and I come walking in there and I didn't know that he had hired the number one best Elvis in the world from Las Vegas, seven plastic surgeries, whole truckload of stuff, to entertain these folks, you know. At the Hilton, come, I come walking in there and the guy at the front desk goes, oh. Elvis, we was worried, you know, we got your penthouse suite already for you upstairs. We got your limousine out there on the driveway already for you out there. You can have anything at the bar and anything at the restaurant you want. All the girls in there want to get pictures with you. You know what I told him? Well, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Go on and hit it, baby. This is one of my favorites. But now we have the question of the day. Does anybody out here know who the king of Hawaiian entertainment is? Oh. Don, ooh, oh. <laughs> these guys know Don Ho. Don Ho is the king of Hawaiian entertainment because he was the first native Hawaiian to have an international hit song. He's been performing uh, in Hawaii since the early 60s. He's still performing at age 74. He still does three shows a week now. He used to do five shows a week up until last year, and he, said he decided to start cutting back. But uh, Don Ho is known as the king of Hawaiian entertainment, Hawaii's own white, uh, Wayne Newton. Uh, they call him Mr. Waikiki, and we like to do a little tribute to Don Ho right now. Um, has anybody been to the Don Ho show before out here? Have you seen Don Ho before live? Okay. Well, this will bring back some memories, and for those of you folks who haven't been there, give you a little idea how it goes. It usually starts a little something like this. And now, ladies and gentlemen, the king of Hawaiian entertainment and Mr. Waikiki, Don Ho! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. 
I hate this song. <laughs> Baby Bubble. We had make me feel we get low budget for special effects. Come on, <laughs> tiny bubbles make me warm all over. Blow, don't blow the bubbles on the people if they get big. Bubbles in the beer taste cleaner. Gonna love you till the end of time. <laughs> Bye. 